Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on ThinkTech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, are about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today has coached and mentored three Heisman Trophy winners, Ty Detmer, Carson Palmer, and Matt Leinert, and he was the offensive coordinator in the NFL with the Tennessee Titans. He is Coach Norm Chow, and today we are going beyond football. Hey, Coach Norm, welcome to the show. Hey, Rusty. Thank you for having me. Excited to be here. Now, Coach Norm, I have such great respect for you. And I know that when you were at Punahou School, uh, you played baseball, you were a pitcher, you played basketball, you were a center, and you were a guard playing football. I mean, and you were, you, you were all stars in all three sports. And what is it about football that, that you had such a passion for? Well, you know, it's, it's the ultimate team sport, Rusty, without question, you know, because in baseball, everyone has to throw a ball. Everyone has to bat. In basketball, everyone has to shoot. But in football, what, what a person does as a defensive back is compared to what a person does as an offensive lineman are two just completely different uh, ways of doing things. Yet you have to come together as a team. Everybody has to meld as one, and it makes it makes it exciting. It's an exciting – to coach football is exciting because you have that ability to put it – to try to put it all together. Yeah, and Coach Norm, you won the prestigious Athlete of the Year Award at Punahou <laughs> School, and then you went on to play football at University of Utah. Now, about coaching, okay, what is it about coaching that you love so much, and why did you become a coach? Well, I mean, Rusty, I really kind of fell into it a little bit, but, you know, you realize, just like you said in your book, you know, there's, there's teachers and there's coaches, and there's a real need for those types of people, both teachers and coaches. The teachers kind of have to focus in on their subject, whatever they, they're doing, but a, a coach gets to, gets to teach the entire person, if you will, not only the subject that you're working with, but the growth and development, the spiritual part, the emotional part, all of that together. To help make to help a young man just like we were coached and i can remember every one of my coaches like it was yesterday just like we were helped it was fun to be able to help others get to where they want to go yeah no i totally agree with you and and coach norm um one of your early coaching uh positions you worked with uh byu with um lavelle edwards when he was the head coach what is so? What are some things that you learned during your time with uh, Coach Lavelle Edwards? Well, he was he was um, an interesting guy. He his his tactical or, or skills with football, the the strategic part of football, was just okay. But he he knew that, and what he told us was that's why he hired us as assistant coaches, we took care of certain things. He took care of the other parts. And his part was just making sure the young men were developed, you know, emotionally, like I said, spiritually, character wise. And he did a great job with that, but he didn't hold back because he realized that he didn't have time for the, for the football part of it all. The, 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 like I said, the, the tactical part of it all, or the strategical part or whatever, however you want to call it. But he said, hey, I know that, but that's why I hired you. That's why the assistants were hired. And it made for a very, a very uh, close group of coaches because everyone felt like they were contributing. And, and it was because of him, the way he handled the coaches and the way he handled the players. So what kind of culture of excellence did he really create among the, the uh, coaches and the players? Well, he made everybody feel important, whether you were the 90th guy on the team or the first guy on the team or the offensive coordinator or just the position guy. Everyone was important to him. And everyone contributed. And that, that made it fun for, for everybody because everybody wants to be included. Everybody wants to be a part of it. And the way he handled young people, I tell you, the other thing he did was uh, that I learned from is the way he recruited. You know, he made a young man feel like, hey, you, you, you know, you're really important to us. And, and you are. And the way he handled that and the way he handled his parents, the parents, it, it made it, it made it, 
he was an interesting guy that way. He stood out above all the rest, and he didn't have a huge ego. You know, other teams called. In fact, as assistants, we're all hoping sometime he would take another job and we'd go with him. But uh, he didn't want to do that. BYU was where he wanted to be, and and he knew that, and that made it very comfortable for the rest of us. We went on, you know, for 20-some-odd years. We were on a year-to-year contract, and but we never felt like that was the next year wasn't going to happen. Wow. And Coach Norm, during your time at USC, you were the offensive coordinator and Pete Carroll was the head coach and you guys had major success. Um, What is it about Pete Carroll that makes him successful? Well, he's a he's a he's a he's a football junkie. And, you know, he he was through it all. He had just gotten let go. You know, there's a saying in coaching that you're not a good football coach till you get fired. And you really understand what it's all about. And, and we all been fired and, and he got, had gotten fired. So he understood what it took. And, you know, he wasn't the first choice when he went to, when he went to USC, I think he was more like the third or fourth choice, but it didn't matter to him. His positive atmosphere, attitude that he had and his wanting to help people, you know, his staff, a lot of his staff, he encouraged his staff members to move on because he felt like that was his, one of his roles was to mentor guys. And sure enough, you know, Ed Ogeron at LSU, uh, there's a lot of guys that have moved on because of him. And, and that's what made him special. And he and just enjoyed and had a great knowledge. Unlike Lavelle, he was probably just the opposite. His, his strategical type skills in football and it was, it was, was tremendous. Now, Coach Norm, how, how difficult is it for someone like Pete Carroll to be successful in college and in the NFL? There's not a lot of difference. There's not a lot of difference in, in the, in the, again, in the, in the, in the football part of it, if you will, I keep using that word over and over and over again, the, the technical and the strategical types of things. But what you have to do is be able to handle young people. You really have to be able, and the pros, it's, you know, that's why I think baseball guys, baseball coaches are called managers. You have to manage the players, the Eagles, the, the huge amounts of money that the NFL players make. You have to manage that clubhouse or that locker room. And those that can do that are the ones that are more, more successful. You know, in college, you, 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 you don't get a chance to do that as much. You know, they go to school all day, but in, in, in the NFL, I mean, you're, you're in the office from eight till, till midnight, whatever, with those players. They don't have anything else to do but to be there. So you have to be able to manage that. And Pete has, does a tremendous job with that. Now, Coach Norm, you have my books. And, you know, you know, I talk a lot about leadership and creating a superior culture of excellence. And that's really what you're all about. And what are some things that stood out to you in the books? Well, just like you say, um, you know, the, the difference between coaching and teaching, the, the different highlights as to what it would take to do that, the competitiveness, the, 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 you know, not only that type of skill, but the, the skill about teaching the, the technical parts of the game, but, but managing that overall person. And I think it's, it's, it's um, you know, I, there's a good, st- in my mind, coaching doesn't always end well, if you will. You know, you look at, at Bobby Bowden and Woody Hayes. It's just a profession where it doesn't necessarily end well. Joe Paterno. But, you know, you hear of Bill Parcells, and, and, and he's right when he says that you are measured by your record. And I believe that. But also, that's not totally true because you, you have an ability or an opportunity, I should say, to mold that entire human being. And that's what I liked about some of the players that you talked about, some of the stories that you talked about, the stories of the players that you talked about. Because, you know, I thought about this just recently when Bobby Bowden passed, you know, no one, they, yeah, they mentioned his record, but they also mentioned about a, what a tremendous human being he was and the influence that he had on other coaches. I went to work at, at NC State for one of his assistants. His head, first head coaching job was at NC State and he came from Bobby Bowden's staff. And Rusty, that's all he ever talked about. In fact, our manuals were, I think he just erased Florida State and put NC State in there because that's how much belief he had in this guy. And not the, 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 the football part, that's important, but the, the building of young people and how he, how he did that. And when Bobby, when Bobby Coach Bowden passed, that's all you read about about how the, what, what people have to say about the type of person he was. And I think that's what's critical in your book because you cover both 
the entire person. And that's what's critical in my mind. Yeah, and I feel like like legacy, like a legacy that you have had and and like Coach Bobby Bowden. I mean, legacy is is how you make people feel, what it what it meant to them, the the meaningfulness of the experience. Because yeah, there is there's records, you know, win losses, but that's separate from legacy. And and I like that you brought up, you know, those coaches. Um and coach coach Norm, I want to ask you about. The, the Heisman Trophy winners that, that you have coached. When, when you were at BYU, you coached and mentored Ty Detmer. What, what were some specific things that you really helped him with? Well, I, 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 wish I, 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 I wish that were kind of true. But first of all, he was a good player before we got him. You know, he came, he was a son of a coach, and he was a, he was a great player. But I, 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 oh, above all else, in my mind, yeah, and I was blessed to coach three Heisman Trophy winners. Been back to that Heisman show or dinner, or whatever, three times back in New York. But the bottom line was there were three of those young men. The three young men were great individuals. You talk about the whole person, you know, spiritual, um, emotional, and, and 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 besides being good football players, they, they were there. They were there. They were all different. Um, Ty was 5'11", about 185 pounds. Carson Palmer was the, the epitome. If you were to make a training tape about how to be a quarterback and throw a football, you'd take, you'd take Carson Palmer. He learned differently. He, uh, it took him a while to learn things. Matt Liner was sharp as the day, and Ty was sharp as heck. heck. Carson, not that he wasn't sharp, he just took him a little longer. He would tell me all the time, Coach, I need to see it. I need to see it. I want the reps. I want the reps. And but when he got it, oh gosh, did he have it? So I, you know, we we were blessed to do that. But I think the major, the biggest characteristic that all three of them had, the characteristics actually one is they were good people. Two, they were extremely bright, and three, they worked like heck to get better. And you know, Coach Norm, I want to talk to you more about Carson and Matt as well. But you know, you know that there you could have all the talent in the world, but that doesn't necessarily guarantee winning. And and you know, having a star quarterback doesn't necessarily, you know, guarantee winning as well. I mean, everyone on the team has to buy in, and and that star quarterback has to be able to feel like they can you know, perform at a certain level consistently to really help the whole as a team. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, I, I think that that's, that's so true. And, and those young men knew how to do that. They, they know how to make other people better. They know how to get into a huddle and say, come on, let's get going now. They knew when to push. They knew when to back off. I, I, I'll tell you another story. I, you know, maybe stories got better, better, uh, teaching moments but we were at a practice one day and this great big lineman who eventually won the outland trophy you know it was hot everybody was tired and he leaned up at at at, at ty and he said just call a play and ty detmer 180 pounds this guy's 300 pounds looked down and then he says i'm the boss i call the play you just do what i ask you to do and they, the guy went oh okay and 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 but it was a perfect example of when to push that leadership and went to back away, and 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 yeah, uh, good players, great players, like you talk about, they know that, they get that, they understand that it takes everybody. Carson Palmer was the favorite. I mean, he he, he surrounded himself with a bunch of good people, and, and that the, the total team effort that you talk about, you know, unlike maybe just a tad different from individual sports, but that's so important, and that's what good players have. That's what great players have: that ability to tie it all together. So, Coach Norm, um, what what story sticks out when I when I mention Carson Palmer to you? Well, I'll tell you a story. We the first year we were there, he was the first uh, guy that came into the office to introduce himself. And when I handed him the, the playbook, which is the only smarts I have, so the playbook was about a half an inch long, uh, thick. He was so happy because the coach previous, who was a tremendous football coach, his playbook was, you know, a couple inches thick and it was hard for him to get it. So he was he was happy right then and there. But as we went on that first year, Rusty, we didn't it wasn't a great year to begin with. And Pete came to me and says, you know, coach, we, we got to make a change. If we don't get this thing going, we have to make a change in a quarterback spot. 
And like I always told Peter, I said, you know, you're the boss. If you're telling me, fine. If you're asking me, here's my opinion. And so we agreed that that Carson would have one more game. Uh, it was at the University of Arizona. And if he didn't perform like we wanted him to, then we were going to have to change and go to Matt Leiner. And I told Carson that. I, I didn't pull any punches. I told Carson, Carson, look, you got to have, you got to get this thing going. And Rusty, he took that and he tore Arizona apart and he just went on from there. And I, I, I often look back and we often laughed about that situation, but I think the challenge was there and great players accept challenges like that, want those challenges. And he just, the rest is history. I mean, the guy is, you know, he's just, he, he had a tremendous college and NFL career. Well, he rose to the occasion and he never looked back. And one of yeah. your other Heisman winners, like you said, is Matt Leinert. What, what did you focus on with Matt and what, what made him a great leader? Well, you know, <laughs> that's another good story. We went to spring practice um, the year that Carson left and, and we had pre some pretty good quarterbacks. In fact, we had a young man by the name of Matt Castle who spent about 15, 16 years in the National Football League and they were competing for the job and there was a third player that was competing for the job. And, you know, we were trying to be fair to all of them and I think we learned the lesson, uh, Pete and I talked about this, by trying to be fair to all of them, we weren't fair to any of them because we gave them all equal reps and they never got enough. But the, the, the time came where the, the decision had to make be made and, and Pete had felt one way, I felt another, some coaches, everybody had their, their, their feelings, uh, expressed their feelings and we decided to go with Matt and Matt knew that as well. And so when you explain that to Matt, say, hey, listen, Matt, you know, you, you won this job. This is yours, but only because of this or whatever it was. And he just took off just like Carson did. Matt Leonard was extremely bright, is extremely bright. He's on television today. You can listen to him and you know how bright he is football-wise. We used to scrimmage Rusty and Pete would do something on defense and Matt would just, coach, you can't do that. I know what you're doing. You know, so we had a lot of fun, but he... Because he talent-wise, he was good. He had an accurate arm. He wasn't overly strong, but he was as bright as the day was long. How tough is it? You know, Matt Leinert was a lefty. What's the difference, you know, in terms of being a lefty righty as quarterback? Uh, that one's above above my. I don't know um, the way you accept the ball from the center. I think because people ask me that about Steve Young as well. You know, because the ball spins differently. But I think it's just a matter of get, the receivers getting used to the spin of the ball because we didn't, you know, I mean, coaching-wise, you didn't change any of the mechanics or anything like that because of the right or left. I, I, that one's way, you know, you have to ask some, like, I mean, some physiologists that question. I don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, Coach Norm, during your time in the NFL, you were the offensive coordinator with the Tennessee Titans. And you were coaching another Heisman Trophy winner, Vince Young. What were what were things that you did to help him improve from the college ranks, you know, into the NFL? You know, Vince was is an interesting guy. He's a tremendous young man as well, but uh, he he wasn't um, in college. Everybody they, they kind of catered to him maybe is the right word they, they did things for him so his 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 skill skills as far as the technical part of the game the making the decisions you know wasn't really there when he got to the nfl but the owners and the head coach they had made up their mind that they wanted to play him so we just took it slow and he understood that and we kept the game the game plan fairly i don't know what the right word is maybe basic and then as he progressed, then we would we would go on and on and on. But he was such a talented young man that could run and throw, and he, he, you know he, he he had a long way to go mentally. Like I said, try not not mentally, but trying to make sure he understand understood coverage and that kind of thing. But once he got it, he was like Carson. He was tremendous, but he was so skilled. I remember I was telling him one day we were in an overtime game. And it was a real critical down, third and four or whatever. And, I, and, you know, you could talk to them on the phone. I said, Vince, look, look for the look for the, the primary receiver. Look for the tight end. If not, run. Just get us four yards so we can hold on to the ball. He took off. He went 58 yards. Rusty, he scored a touchdown. The game was over. It was an overtime game. And we were, uh, 
we looked at each other and wow, what was that? Whoa, we just wanted four yards and he went 58, but he had that kind of ability. And he's a really a nice young man. I got to see him about a year ago. He was in Los Angeles at ESPN and, and he's a grown man now with a family. It, it, Vince was fun. Vince was really fun. So Coach Norm, in terms of coaching styles, I mean, back in the day, you know, there's the Vince Lombardi coaching style and, and you know, how coaching has, you know, has changed through these decades. I mean, you can't do things like, like they used to do That's nowadays. Right. That's right. How was, how was your coaching style when you first started? And then how did you have to adapt, you know, in recent times to, to how it is now. Sure, sure. That, that's a real good question. But see, you know, we were, we, we grew up and you're exactly right. You know, I can remember my high school coaches, Charlie Arne and, and Dave Eldridge. And I mean, I, and Bud Scott, I mean, they were hard now. And, and one of my real heroes is, is coach Arne, you know, his Cully's dad. And, and I, I didn't like playing football when I first got to put on, I, 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 it was hard. He was so hard on us. But then one day, I remember my dad, my other hero, obviously, after practice one day, I was complaining to him on the way home. And he says, you know what, son? Did it ever occur to you that all Coach Ane is trying to do is make you better? And it, that, that, that always stuck with me because regardless of your style, if the young person realizes that you're, that you're trying to help them get better, they'll do whatever you ask. And that's especially true in the National Football League. Those guys spend, you know, they, they have so little time, right? The NFL means not for long. If they know that you care about them and trying to make them better, they will run to the wall. And I think that's the key. And that's the big difference nowadays. You can't be like Coach Ana, uh, Ana and get after you and, and get after you and get after you. You have to kind of do it a little different way. But the result or the goal remains the same. Try to get the young man better. Try to put young people in a position to be successful, just like I think you talked in your book. If you put them in a position to be successful and they know that you're trying to do that, I think that's the key. No, oh, you're so right. It's all about empathy. And, and Coach Norm, you know, great coaches are always learning. And that what's make, that's what makes them even greater. And during your time as head coach at University of Hawaii, what are some things that you learned uh, during that time? Well, it, that was a, 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 as you know, a kind of a difficult time. They were go, we were Hawaii was going from the from the WAC to the Mount West. They were the the, the 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 differences are huge. Hawaii really has difficulty with you know finances and all that kind of stuff. I think the biggest lesson that I learned was a little bit of patience because the young people that were in the program that 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 we were a part of were terrific young guys they tried like heck it was hard for them you know you get on an airplane i remember rocky long at san diego state we were before the game he came up to me and he says man that's a hard trip coming over here you know it takes a lot out of you i said right you do this once we have to do this six times when we go to the mainland so don't complain about the one time you came over on a charter and we go on a commercial and we laughed about that but it was very difficult for the the players I thought but they handled it well they tried uh, you know it didn't work out the way it's supposed to but I, I tell you the one thing that I take great pride in about my time at University of Hawaii was that I felt like our teams always played hard they did the best they could and that's all you can ask I mean we you know we were playing one year we played Colorado I think Ohio State Wisconsin boy, it all in a row and by the time that that group of games were over. I mean, it was hard. It was hard for these young people. You know, you get on a commercial flight and you're sitting back there with grandma and, and the little grandson going off to Disneyland and you're 315 pounds and trying to squeeze into a little seat. It made it hard, but those kids never complained. And I think that was the best lesson that I learned about, about young people and how resilient they really are. Yeah, no, that's, that's, and like you said about effort, I mean, all as coaches, all we can expect from our players and our teams is having a great attitude and giving a fantastic effort and coach Norm, you know, personally or professionally, what's, what's a big adversity situation that you dealt with in your life? Well, that's a hard one, Russ. I, 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 I guess I can tell the story, you know, um, I was sitting in a hotel room in Houston, Texas on a Friday. We were about ready to play a game on, on, on that next day. And I get a phone call and they had rushed my wife to the hospital. My daughter-in-law called and 
not sure what it was. She had a tremendous headache. Um, and I told her, you know, I asked her if, 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 if it came up with, I could tell this story and it ends well. So it's not anyway. So I talked to my children. We decided to coach the game. I coached the game on Saturday. Uh, I flew back to Los Angeles. So we had a, we had great assistant coaches, Durante Jones, who's now with LSU as an assistant head coach. He took the team back. And you know what, Russ, when I got to the, I, I, I live near the, the, the LAX airport. So I, Came home to jump in and get a quick shower. And I looked down and her bags were half packed because it was a Friday, the Saturday, and it was Sunday. That Friday, we we're going to bury my mother in Hawaii. My mother had passed. We were going to have a funeral service. So one Friday, my wife has an aneurysm. And the next Friday, we we're, we're burying my mother. And it was a hard time. It was a very, very difficult time. But, but it was also a time when I had to sit back and say, look, all the things that you're trying to teach, just like you as a coach, everything that you try to teach your young people about getting up after you fall, everybody falls, nobody wins all the time. Prove it now. Be a man and, and, and be the guy you think you are for your children and all that. And that's what we try to do. And, you know, it, it, it ends well. We find out later that she had an aneurysm. She had a, 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 a bleed, they call it, in her brain. And, and, uh, was in ICU for a couple, three weeks. So we'd play a game on Saturday. Saturday night, I'd fly back to LA. And, and then Monday night, I'd go back to Honolulu and try to coach the team. And, and um, But it made you realize that, that, you know, like just like we talk about during this time, that how important other factors are besides the winning. Who won the game four years ago? You know, you'd have to go back and look. But, uh, and, and fortunately, she, we found out later, Rusty, that, uh, 50% of the people that had what she had don't even make it through that day. Mm. And of the 50% that make it, only 13%, 16%, something like that, get all of their faculties back. It ended well. She's fine. Uh, still going strong after all these years. So you, you learn it. And, and everybody faces adversity. Everybody faces adversity in their careers in coaching. And, and your willingness or your ability to, to get back up and get moving is, I think, the, you know, the real key, like Martin Luther King said, right? What, what is that? He has a famous quote, uh, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but rather where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. It's on his, it's on his uh, monument back there. I told my every team I've ever had, I told him about that saying that I just love because that's the truth. Oh, I love that saying, Coach Norman. Coach, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up. You've seen greatness. You've coached greatness. How do you define greatness? That's a hard one, Rusty. That's a hard one. Uh, very few people get to that level in my mind, but it is probably a combination of hard work, dedication, humility, respect, all of the, 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 the characteristics that you talk about in your book um, put together, combined into one human being. And I think that defines greatness. Very, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a big word because, um, you know, everybody has difficult times. Everybody wins, everybody loses. But it's those guys that you remember, the coach Bounds that when at the time of his passing, people just raving about the type of person he was, the legacy that he left, the people that he made better. I think that's greatness. And, uh, you know, we all wish we could get there. Coach Norm, absolutely fantastic hearing your insights and having you on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. And then uh, we enjoy your, your niece, your niece and my um, granddaughter are best pals. And so we'll hopefully see a lot more of you. And then it's an honor to be here, Rusty. And thank you for thinking about us. And thank you for having us. Thanks, Coach Norm. Thank and you. thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. I hope that Coach Norm and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.